You saw Frozen, yes? Yeah, of course. All right. So, remember the end of the movie? They sent the, the bad guy. He's getting punished for treason or, you know, trying to kill the queen. What they do? They send him home. Yeah. That was a big punishment. That's yeah, what banishment yeah. feels like for me. I, I understand that feeling. Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West. And today we're breaking down our picks for the top five and one worst level four warlock spells. This is a funky little list. I like this list. I don't know if it's good, but it's nifty. There's some trash like... here, but. Yeah, there is. I like some of it. Um, I didn't, I wasn't super enthusiastic and like enough to like really get excited about five picks but uh mm -hmm. yeah i had to had to reach a bit for those last two i think but um yeah there's some solid ones there are options for sure and uh, i think like how gonna, good are those options i, I think we're gonna disagree on a, on the worst but um <laughs> yeah there's there's a clear winner and then there's the one i picked excellent i can't wait to talk about that too all right um yeah, you want to kick us off? Sure. Uh, real quick, remember, Warlock's uh, out there. You get packed magic, which means you don't have regular spell slots, which means these fourth-level spells are competing with every fifth-level spell you ever take and every third-level spell you've ever taken and all of the lower ones than that, too. And you get, like, three of them. Um, I think at most you get four of these, and they're per short rest. So, like, that kind of means you want them, because you get so few in, like, so few uses, you want a variety of spells that are good in different circumstances. And in those circumstances, they are both powerful and tend to have a long duration, right? There are spells you can rely on to give you a big boost to your character's performance over the long term. It makes things like Hellish Rebuke or Shield a lot worse in the Warlock class because they're kind of instantaneous small big small boosts for a slot. Whereas spells like Summon Aberration, my number five, are probably more where you want to be. Because this little guy, Summon Aberration, is just like, you don't need it. And you've had, I, I didn't want to include it here, but I think I'm including it over a different spell that I was tossing around too, because you have Summon Shadow Spawn and Summon, summon uh, Undead as other options that you can upcast. Aberration does give you some neat perks, though. The Beholder gives you a little hover speed guy with some I beams that can shoot from range to slot every generation. There are reasons to take Summon Aberration over the other two. And if it's what you're in the market for, it is an excellent little spell, especially if you don't have a summon spell up to this point. Um, it also made my list, but uh, I mean, let's be real. You, you, you've got a summon spell at this point. Yeah, it's probably Shadow Spawn. It might be Undead, yeah. but it's usually one yeah. of those two. You might have both. I don't remember yeah. what, uh, what all those lists look like. But um, yeah, it's another summon spell. Beholder can, I suppose, or their own brand of coolness, if that if that matters. But uh, yeah, this one... Um, yeah, I picked it because it's a solid summon spell, and uh, yeah, the, if if I if I hadn't, I'd be reaching for a third one. Fair enough. What do you got uh, then? Let's see. All right, I did have summon apparition. What else do I have? I'm sure you're going to have banishment. Banishment is my number one because it upcasts ah, to right. two things, and that's really good on warlock. Yeah, that's good. That is a, definitely a good thing. It uh doesn't have the the huge long duration you were talking about, but uh, it is a powerful effect. I'm gonna I'm gonna read a, a one sentence to you. Otherwise, the target doesn't return. No, oh, yeah. that's a very long duration. <laughs> that's true, but that's it's. it's I like, not like it's not how I like to win a fight, though. I uh, mm -hmm. if I want if something is attacking me, or if we're in a situation where I am compelled to beat something to death. I want to do that. You want to actually wanna... get the joy of beating it to death. Right. I don't want to send it home. I will say like banishment is, it doesn't feel that satisfying to use a lot of the time. You're absolutely right. Where it's like, Oh, there's four hill giants or more like there's four earth elementals. Two of them cease to exist. And just no one let my concentration break here and it'll be fine. And because only two earth elementals left, it's less likely to happen. And then you're like, okay, well, we just dealt with two of them for free because our, our warlock clapped his hands. Um, yeah, there's not a lot of climactic excitement there, but it's still powerful. I think it's really, really solid. It's also the kind of effect that you're going to 
probably prioritize targeting specific encounters with. So in the context of Warlock spell slots, it's like, well, in the two encounters we're against three things, this thing's disgusting. So you pull it out, then it warps the entire encounter, and then most of the time if you're against the hordes of things or one individual entity that'll come back, you just use other spell slots, or use other spells. All right, you Not saw <clears throat> you saw Frozen, yes? Yeah, of course. All right, so remember at the end of the movie, they sent the, the, the bad guy getting punished for treason or you know trying to kill the queen what they do they send him home yeah that was a big punishment that's yeah, what banishment yeah. feels like for me i i understand that feeling okay it's like oh you were summoned into this world to defend this evil lich and now we're giving you a vacation mm-hmm. Permanent um, vacation at that. all right banishment yeah it made my list now my number four probably should be my number five but because Summon Aberration is so close to something else that you can already do, I was like, you don't need it that much. If you have one of the other two, you don't put this on your sheet. You still might put something greater demon on your sheet, though. Oh, God. Because this spell is spicy. This spell is so <laughs> good. I love this spell so much. It's diabolically evil. It requires a vial of human blood that was acquired in the last 24 hours of someone that you personally murdered. And, like... You utter some foul words, you put this thing from the abyss into existence, you can kind of control it, but for the most part, it just kills things. And that thing might be you at the end of the day if your little blood circle fades. So, you know, uh, be careful. But it's such a cool ability, it's such a fun, deeply rich effect. It's so deeply magical. How can you not love this thing? It's so cool. Well, I mean, it, I mean, thematically, yeah, it's got all the the fun uh, things. It's uh, like everything the 80s warned us about. Yeah. <laughs> but um so yes, cool. However, like in, in practice, it's uh I mean you got a you got a demon. The Yes. C R five or lower demon at that. Right. Like the effect is that uh yeah, it's like any other summoning thing, except it's probably gonna come and t- attack you eventually. Once it chews through all the other villains, maybe you just stick this yeah. in the middle of a crowded square just to, you know, be a villain, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> This sounds it's like have me. a lot more fun tormenting civilians than uh, it is going to try and torment you. I don't know. You can also get a. Bu- there are like really cool um, fiends that you can get off of this. So if I'm looking at the CR four five category, uh, we got like bar that barl guras, which are I think the big gorilla things. You've got like uh, of rocks are CR six, but we can go to like shadow demons are super cool. You can get. Die books, which sound just like diabolically awful. Like they're they're so they're so fun. A babao. Oh god, what's a babao do? I should have looked up what all these things did before I started this to talk about how cool their abilities well, are, but like you're gonna find some cool weird things. Babao's got we, two melee attacks that, that hit video for yet. good damage, it's got a weakening gaze, you can do some neat stuff. It's not as powerful oh, yeah. as the summon stuff, for sure. It's just like a almost strictly worse version of a fourth level summon spell, but it's cooler. And that's why I get some perk over some aberration in my book. Okay, yeah, that's that's fair. That uh, sounds like a me reason, but um, yeah, it'll do. Uh, it did not make my list. So uh, surprise, surprise. Uh, let's see what did I have? All right, I got sickening radiance. I, I do feel good about this one. I like sickening radiance a lot. It's my number three, I think. Huh? I think I've come out. I've warmed up on this spell quite a bit. Uh, viewers at home, we've done this video twice now. We talked about this in the first one. Uh, Bob may, have, or may or not have accidentally deleted it, but um, this <laughs> is a cool little effect. What do you go ahead? You're not supposed to tell people that. No, oh, why? All right, find the curtain. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, I like it because it's got a huge area. It, um, yeah, it does some decent damage, but you know, most of all, it layers on layers. Um, um, levels of exhaustion which mm-hmm. uh you know you get you get somebody in there more than once and it becomes more and more likely that they're going to stay there until they die very shortly thereafter it, this spell to me reads as something that like out of combat is a, me- a method of just killing somebody right if you have someone locked in a room you can just six doesn't matter the H- their hp you just stick a sickening radiance on them and you can have confidence that exhaustion will kill them mm-hmm. um in combat, the area isn't the best, 
it's concentration of the 10 minutes does mean you just like slam this down for the encounter, lock and bar the doors and just pray everything in the room dies. And that's genuinely a useful little effect. Like if, if everything's sitting on like 80 HP, you can go, okay, great. There's no way out, but the way we were going in, bar the door, barbarian, sickening radiance. And then you just wait it out. And eventually that entire room is dead. That's kind of novel. Now other spells can probably do that too. You know, like cloud kill and the different area of effect precision damage effects, but this one does it in a, a kind of interesting way. And while, like, I'm not the most impressed with it in combat, you really need to get, like, two layers of exhaustion for it to be worth it. It can happen, and when that will happen, I think it'll be really solid. I think if you've got anybody else in your party with, uh, you know, any kind of force movement abilities, then, uh, yeah, they're going to want to take advantage of this. It helps that it's, <clears> it, yeah, you're right. It triggers when they move into the space or they start their turn there, which are the two things you wanted to be area of effects damage spells. So that, yeah, you're absolutely right. You have anyone else that can support it. It's even better. And you said it's not not too big an area, but thirty foot radius is pretty freaking big. I mean, the, mm -hmm. you know, if I think I've said this with other uh, area spells, but if you um, at the, the worst case scenario is that you can make people go in a direction they otherwise would not have gone in, which is so, normally towards you, yeah, because you don't want to be in your sickening radiance. Well, no, of course not. But that's yeah, kind of it, when I say it's got a small area. What I might contextualize is they can most creatures can move out of it in a single movement. They don't have to spend any actions to get out of it. If it were forty foot, that's a lot bigger because most more places in the middle of it force dashes, and that's much more relevant than I spend thirty feet from the five feet out from the center, and I'm no longer in the second radiance. Yeah, but if there's like anything stopping them from doing that or like pushing wall. them back a little bit, you know, once they get two levels in, they start. Um, yeah, their movement is affected. Yeah, once their movement's affected, this is going to be truly debilitating. But at that point, you kind of already won the encounter. And having yeah. a spell that has these cool little bells and whistles and levers that you can engage with in some fun ways, that makes it a really neat spell to, I think, have a lot of fun. Or, I mean, it is uh, 10 minutes with concentration. Like, there's, if you've got, like, a really big fight going on with a lot of different, you know, enemies running around, <laughs> you can keep a... Just as long as that stays up, you can keep tossing them back in there. Even if they get out, shove them back in. You're just envisioning the character that you're building that always has Repelling Blast. That's the first invocation that you're always taking. And you're like, oh, they're coming out of it. I'm knocking it back in. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So, yes, that one, especially for Warlocks, um, I quite like. It's neat, for sure. Oh, my right, turn. Um, yep. My number two. I think this might be better than Banishment in, like, the amount of times you'll cast it, but it is, like, worse as far as it doesn't have that huge splashy impact. It's Charm Monster. I love this thing on Warlocks. I've come up on it a lot. It, in fact, it doesn't have concentration. It hits multiple things on upcast, and it's got an hour duration, which are just, like, check, 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 going all the boxes that I want for a Warlock spell slot. High impact. Can deny... A monster from jobbing into a fight and killing you and your buddies. You can hit two of them. Usable in multiple scenarios and powerful in said scenarios. It can sometimes just do Banishment's job. While also sometimes doing, you know, other neat little social navigation things. I think this spell is really, really sweet. Yeah, it, it made my list too. This is one of my one of my reachers. I maybe don't appreciate it as much as I should. It's uh, like I, I see the value of hold monster. Or, you know, they're paralyzed. Go beat the snot out of them. There you go. Um, something like Banishment. Sends away. Yes, this can also do that. It's, hey, buddy, go go away for a while. <laughs> for an hour. As long as you aren't already fighting them, right? Because then they have advantage and right. those lowers. Yeah, but, you know, like, you know, ask them to leave while you butcher their friends. Yeah, you're just like, the fight's about to break out, and you just look to two of the scariest, you know, Balrogs or whatever, and you'd be like, hey, guys, I see you there with your big demon whips. Take, take a lap. You're good. We're chill. Go get a, go grab a beer from the, the cooler. We'll just deal with your, your, your co-workers, and then we'll talk it out later. Yeah. Um, that, I guess there's value there. That, uh, I think so. Yeah. I think that's neat. I like that this is, this is a fact once it happens... It just lasts the duration. Right? Yeah, that's weird. That's unusual. There's no like continued saving throws or. As long as um, you and your buddies yeah. don't do anything harmful to it, it's charmed by you, and there's nothing you can do to stop that. There's nothing anyone else can do to stop that. Hitting you doesn't end this effect because it doesn't have concentration. Right. Like, if if you do this to Tim the Balrog and Jeremy the other Balrog wants you to Tim to fight, he's out of luck. As long as you're nice to Tim, you're good to go. See, I'm. 
I guess my biggest issue with it is I can't see as many, like, for example, with Charm Person, there's a lot of uh, role play and social utility with this. I, I see less opportunity for that with monsters, you know. I think there'll be a lot of settings once you get to the mid to upper tiers where you stop dealing with humanoids and start dealing with a free. You start dealing with Modrons. You start dealing yeah. with, you know, the plane chase or planescape stuff. You start dealing with, you know, Fey Wild stuff. And you're going to like, if you're dealing with hags, if you're dealing with, you know, big arch fey, if you're dealing with devils and demon lords, Charm Monster works on them where Charm Person yeah. doesn't. And that's kind of relevant for the upper tier of scaling. So I think there is, it won't be every campaign you're right. But there will be a lot of campaigns where this becomes the new that we're navigating in a tavern encounter that just happens to have some hyper powerful entities because we're in this big grand space opera style uh, adventure at this point. Yeah, like I said, it made my list. I just wasn't as enthusiastic about it as the others. I think it's sweet. Yeah. I'm more enthusiastic about this than I think every other spell on my list has some greater demon. But I acknowledge some greater demon is definitely worse. <laughs> um. All right, I guess that's uh, down to me. I've got... All right, yeah, this is my other Reacher. I got Dimension Door. Yeah, I really want Dimension Door, but I can't for Warlock. I, it's just so expensive. It is. However, when I'm you know comparing it to some of these other ones, like like I got Summon Aberration here. Um, you know, if I've already got two other Summon Spells, you know, another summon spell isn't doing a lot for me, whereas Dimension Door might come in handy in a pinch. Yeah, that's a really good point. This is the kind of spell where you don't want to always be casting it. So, like, case full casters don't mind once they hit 13th, 14th level, just firing off a couple Dimension Doors every long rest. For a Warlock, you're more you're more patient with it, but when you really do need a 500-foot teleport that brings a buddy, you really yeah. need a 500-foot teleport that brings a buddy, so... <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, that that is good reasoning. I does it upscale at all? Sure doesn't. So you're just spending fifth level spell slots on this, which I'm never going to be excited about. But you know, I definitely will say if it's that category of in the moments where it need like it's very critical, this spell will feel good to have for the two or three times per campaign. And if you already know what your spell slots are doing, like you suggested, yes, yeah, this seems like a fine inclusion on your sheet. There's a lot yeah. of spells like this, I think, on this list. I think Psychic Lance, Rallo with whom Psychic Lance is kind of in the same boat, where it's like, I don't like the play pattern of banishment, but I still want to have like a debilitating effect. I think that's a great uh, middle ground where it does a bunch of damage and then can incapacitate them for a round. I think that could easily find a home on some sheets. Hallucinator Terrain sure. seems interesting, but seems impossible to use. But, like, interesting <laughs> at least. But there are a lot of spells in this list where I'm like, I could see this on some character sheets and not be that bad. Like, their moments to shine will be kind of interesting. Galder Speedy Courier. Maybe not that one. <laughs> um. All right, have you done your list? Yeah, Banishment, Charm Monster, Sickening Radiance, Summon Greater Demon which is definitely deserving of being in this top five in some aberration. Oh, shucks. I lost my list. Uh, let's see if I can remember. It's mostly the same as yours. I had Dimension Door, Summon Aberration, um, drawing some blanks now, Charm Monster, um, and, and Sickening Radiance, and uh, another one. I, I forgot. Sorry. I think it, it was Banishment, Charm Monster, Sickening Radiant, Summon Aberration, Dimension Door. Okay, yeah. That was your five. Yeah, so yeah, the only thing, we, you didn't have Summon Greater Demon, and I didn't have Dimension Door. That right. was the differences. Okay. All right. Uh, what was... Uh, all right, well, I'll go first for the worst. Uh, you already actually mentioned it, my worst. And yes, I concede it's not the worst, but it's the one I, I think I like the least is Hallucinatory Terrain. I don't think it's, like, strictly speaking, worse than any of the other of these. That being said, I never have wanted to cast it. I just But it... <laughs> go for it. it Tell me why it's bad. It, it, it frustrates me because, like you said, what, what do you use it for? Like, the, you, it's only... It's a 150-foot cube. You're, you're making one terrain look like a different terrain. And, like, that's that's not enough of an illusion to fool anybody. It's the the 150 foot cube, like it, I, and it having to be natural terrain. So like Mirage Arcanum is a up on an upper level version of this, basically, right? Mm -hmm. Where you affect a big amount, like it's a big space, and you could like right. make it tangible, right? Like it's quasi real. This isn't really that. 
and I I have such a hard time finding like okay what is the value in me making it seem like this pond isn't here because that's kind of the scope it's working with right what's the value in me hiding I guess like a fairy circle I don't have like like major image could probably do that oh, what that's is... another reason yeah because what is this doing that uh, any other illusory spell isn't going to be able to do major yeah. image. Ten minute cast time also means nothing that you can like improvise. You have to plan into it. It seems really tough to use. That being said, it's an illusion spell that hits a big area, and I can I'm positive someone has had a really cool moment in really cool like setup using a hallucinator Turan. What that would be, I could not tell you. I've DM for a while, never seen a cast. It's on four spell what, lists. What is this cube of jungle in the tundra? I mean, like, I'm, I'm more imagining this is creating the oasis in the desert. Yeah, yeah. That's All closer right. to what they're intending. But even that, I'm like, when does that matter? <laughs> I don't know. I guess, I mean, yeah. If, all right. If you do an oasis in the desert, 150 foot cube, how far away could somebody see that from? Like, if you in just desert, wanted some very long distance, I would assume. Yeah. So if you just wanted to up somebody's chances of dying in a desert then uh, yeah they make make them walk all the way out there the you wrong mean, like, way like a oasis in a desert i can envision there being like world building implications of this you got like a wizard some kind of desert nomad that has is doing some kind of archaeological research in the big empty desert area right and they live out of this oasis but they don't want anyone to come screw with them so they just pretend that they just every day hallucinatory in this oasis is in fact is a regular desert there is nothing for anyone to see here everyone leave me alone while i do my studies that's a cute little world building thing that could be fun to sort of disguise some small encampments and stuff but that's yeah. not really a player driven tool right that's a world building kind of driven tool and they're, they're, as far as spells existing goes i think this one's pretty harmless from that perspective what about building pit traps uh, it seems like a really long convoluted method of what could be yeah. just naturally disguised twigs and leaves. Yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to save it, but uh, I don't know why, because I picked it for my worst. You hate it, not me. Yeah. I think it's neat. Commenters, let me know if you don't hate Hallucinator Terrain either. Or maybe you do hate Hallucinator Terrain. Maybe I'm way overrating it. Uh, my worst, I think, is going to be Gate Seal. I think <laughs> I, I could talk about Elemental Bane here. Go watch that, that video. That's that where I thought you were going. That's definitely really, really bad. Don't get me wrong. I also just like, I feel like crapping on Gate Seal right now. Cause my God, what, is it, what does this spell do? It's got a minute it's cast. Why is it a minute cast time? Are you going into a lot of gates you need sealed? What's happening here? <laughs> I mean, if you do need a gate sealed, yeah, this will do the job. If you Whereas... need a gate sealed right now, normally that means something is coming through that gate right now. <laughs> and you can't use this to get that effect. It takes a minute to cast. Oh, that's true. Like, if you go, oh, crap, we're being followed by some giant evil ooze monster from the Plain of Oozes, run through the gate and go, everybody hold off the, the ooze for a minute and I'll lock this down? You... This is an encounter for an NPC to have this spell, right? Not an encounter to, like, actually, not a spell that actually goes on a player sheet. Yeah, this would be good uh, in the in the desert after you cast hallucinatory terrain to make a fake oasis, and you know the 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 bandits are coming after you. We're gonna kill you as soon as we stop for some water. And they go over there. In the meantime, you're casting gate seal. Why does that matter <laughs> right now? <laughs> because you you've distracted them and you get your minute to cast it. So you've gone through the gate and are sealing it from the other side? Right, yes. Why don't you just, like, leave? Because they're going to come after you. Okay. They don't know that there's if there's plenty full water on this side of the gate or not. Uh, yeah, sure, maybe. I think this is <laughs> utter hot trash. And at least in this scenario, what actually bought you the time was the hallucinatory terrain, not the gate seal. The gate seal oh, wow. on its own in that window is hot, like, just straight unusable. Right, I and also, I, the, the, the hallucinatory terrain takes 10 minutes to cast. <laughs> sure does. Uh, which means you just had it set up for a while. I think even if you're playing Planescape, Adventures in the Multiverse stuff, you don't want Gate Seal. I think you have to go get into so many gates before you're like, all right, when would I want this for one of those gates that we're hopping around between? And I think the answer to that question is, like, ones of, if that, and that's through dozens and dozens of gates. And I'm not taking a spell that works in ones of those scenarios. I'm not going to have a magic item that does it. I'm just going to have an, I'll use the portal keys in some interesting ways. Build up that little uh, component of it. Or this spell like got printed move. in a book to be like, look, it's player options. That's just a bold-faced lie. 
move an armoire in front of the gate. That's exactly as effective. They go, oh, crap, there's an armoire in here, right? <laughs> Can't push this out of the way. Um, get just like, like if the gate's attached to something, just lay it flat on the ground, and then they can't like do anything about it. Oh, like yeah. the the DMD movie had a D&D great D&D job movie. doing yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was fun and clever. Agreed. This is a hot trash spell, though. Don't ever take it. <laughs> oh, I do I feel like mention. we're I yes. Know. I don't. I don't feel like we're doing our audience justice by not talking about Elemental Bane. I purposely avoided it because I thought you were going to pick it. But, um, I don't think mine yeah. is as bad. I think Gatesville's as bad or worse than <laughs> Elemental Bane. Maybe not worse, but as bad. All right, what's so bad about it? Oh, about okay. Elemental Bane? Okay, so... Mm. Oh, good. So this is a fourth level spell that takes your concentration that you have to spend an action on to use. So it only lasts a minute, so you have to do this basically the prep round of combat or in combat. And then you pick a damage type. It makes a save. If it passes the save, you get nothing. If it fails the save, what you get is nothing. But the next time it takes damage of this type, it takes 2d6 extra and it loses resistance to it. Nope. You need like 16d6 damage out of this to justify its cast. And that's never going to happen. You're never going to get eight instances of this damage type, especially because you spent a whole one of your turns and one of your three spell slots on this. Completely uncastable. Hottest of hot trash. There are very few spells in this game that are as non-functional as Elemental Bane. And it promises it's cool fantasy. It promises it's cool, oh, ooh, I built around fire damage. It's like Elemental Bane, so even the salamanders get roasted. <laughs> and then you cast and you're like, I should have just hit him. I should have just used a different <laughs> spell. I should have just cone of cold it or had like a little bit more flexibility in my toolbox than trying to make my scorching rays or burning hands or whatever work against this thing. This spell's awful. It's terrible. It makes me angrier than Gate Seal does, to be honest, but... Thanks. Yeah, I no. it was. I'm glad you brought this up. Of course. Um. All right. Well, there you go. That was... Other quick shout out. I think Shadow of Moil is overtaken. It's minute duration. Makes it really hard to use, especially on the melee characters that want it. Uh, I don't love that spell either. I think it's really, really hard to get Shadow of Moil to actually function. I wouldn't recommend it. All right. All right. Well, that's going to be our list. Uh, listeners at home, what did you think? What? Uh, let's hear about your list and what? What did you think of our list and our picks? Uh, let us know down in the comments. Shadow Moil is worse than I remember. I thought it was on hit. <laughs> it's when you get it. Wow, that spell's uncastable. I should have talked about Shadow Moil. My bad. We'll have to do that in video sometime soon. Yeah, comment your list. Maybe Shadow Moil's busted. Maybe one of our worsts are busted. Maybe our top fives are just wildly inaccurate. Maybe we just didn't talk about a spell you really like. I think we covered almost every single one of them. Oh, All we right. didn't cover uh, Shadow Death or uh, Summon Death either. Whatever that one is. The ripoff mm. spell. Spirit of Death. That's the one. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Thanks for well, watching. Well, we've done a video on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Sam. Thank you everyone for joining and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.